Another Afghanistan update I want to share with you uh, about, we're going to call this one Mark. And um, wow, just an amazing testimony of how the Lord has just <laughs> overcome this brother's heart with, uh, with his love, his extravagant love. Um, I fully believe that we are going to start seeing missionaries being brought to America and to the West um, because I believe that our, I, I believe that the body of Christ in the West is, has fallen into a stupor, um, has fallen asleep. Um, and I believe that's for a lot of reasons. But what I want to share with you is this conversation that I've had with this brother, Mark, um, located in Afghanistan. And, uh, and his family, um, they've all worked with U.S. coalition forces. And uh, and once the Taliban took over in August, uh, their, their lives were in danger. But prior to that, uh, this brother was introduced um, to Jesus um, from a sister uh, that he happened to connect with um, through working with coalition forces. And she started sharing um, the gospel with him and uh, he very quickly became very interested in this, uh, this prophet Jesus, who is also savior. And, um, and he began to follow Christianity and claim Christianity as his faith. Um, and then Afghanistan fell in August of last year. And he felt that he was kind of going into a dark place um, spiritually and was feeling uh, just as though he was struggling and um, fearful of what the future would hold. And uh, he knew that he needed to get get back into these Zoom calls um, with uh, with these believers. And um, and so he, he reached out and uh, he got reconnected and and um, rededicated his life um, to the Lord. And um, what I want to share with you is as, as we were talking, um, you know, because I asked him, what does this look like for your relationship with your family? How did your family respond when they discovered that, um, that you were following the Christian faith? Because for a while he didn't tell them he had to conceal it because it, there, it brings a death sentence in Afghanistan. If, if you publicly pro proclaim or profess Jesus as your savior, as your God, as if you profess, you know, your faith in, in God with Jesus as your savior who died on the cross and was resurrected, that carries a death sentence. And so he had to conceal um, his new faith for um, several years. Um, but they began to see a change in his character and his behavior um, and uh, just continued to see behavioral improvement. Um, but uh, what he said, you know, because I asked him, was, was it a difficult choice for you uh, to accept Jesus as your savior? And, and, and he shared with me how um, the reason that he had to conceal it was, again, because if he were to tell his family, his family may disown him, his family may report him, and he could lose his life. And when he shared that with me, I just, I had such a uh, feelings of honor and respect for this brother because he recognizes the cost. The cost to him is his life. Yet he still chose Jesus. And here we are in America. I think sometimes we flippantly proclaim and profess Jesus without truly understanding the cost because here there, there really there is a cost but we don't we don't feel the pressures of that cost and here in Afghanistan this brother he he, he admits that I had to make a choice and I knew that when I pro profess Jesus as savior I knew that that meant that I could lose my life at any moment. I knew that that could mean persecution for me, physical persecution and torture. I knew that it was gonna cost me everything. But I knew that it was right. I knew that, that he was the only one that brings me peace. 
and joy and sustainment and provision. He is my source for everything. And so making this decision for him was not light when he took into account the cost. And, uh, and so I just, I want to encourage you to pray for these individuals in the Middle East and in hostile and restricted nations because they're making a choice to follow Jesus because they recognize that what they've been following hasn't followed through on their promises. And they're desperate for a God who loves them. They're desperate for a God who will not forsake them. They are desperate for a God who comes through. (laughs) They're desperate for truth. These people have been rejected and abandoned by their own government, by their own spiritual leaders. And so, um, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for strength and increased faith and courage. And also pray for them to have the courage to share their testimony with the world. Because I have a feeling that we're going to need this in America very, very soon. I believe we need it now. But I believe that there is an increase in persecution. We don't even know persecution right now. But it's coming. And these brothers and sisters, these saints, are going to be the ones to train us. God bless you, Maranatha.